We contrasted rotational motion to circular motion. You now see the difference. I want to give you a few more tips before we really get into the math, though, of uh, steps to begin a successful study of rotational motion. So this is just sort of just to bring up a couple more little, little things. One, acknowledge. that your object, whatever you're studying, takes up space in the universe. Basically, remember that it is not a point particle. It takes up space, it has some shape, and the way it points, its orientation matters. That's just sort of the life-affirming one. Well, let's get on to some sort of more, more important ones here. Um, next, you want to track its angular position, which way it's pointing. And here are the three most important words here, about an axis. It really doesn't mean anything to talk about the angular position or a change in angular position unless you define the rotation axis. Because an object, we'll go back to our extended object here, can rotate about multiple axes, right? So here, there's an axis, it's rotating about, it could rotate about this axis, it could rotate about this axis. It can rotate about all three of them, like at the same time, like that. So you gotta think about where the axis is. Let's pick one here and draw it. Like it could be, uh, if we draw it kinda like this, there it is. So one of those axes was straight through the middle this way. And when it rotates about that axis, that means this part goes here, that part goes there, and this kind of goes around and that goes around. It can spin about that rotation axis. Sometimes having to identify rotation axes makes it feel like this is somehow special. This is somehow different from translational, but it really isn't. In translational, you also had to identify axes, x, y, and z. And you just talked about how you translated along the axis from the origin. Here, it's the same thing. We just have to identify a, trans or an orientation, uh, a rotation axis, and we just have to talk about how we rotate around it rather than move along it. So there's really nothing any different than translational. And then uh, finally, three, we're going to follow the mathematics uh, of translational kinematics. We spent a lot of time thinking very carefully about all those equations and where they came from and how they're related to calculus. We're not gonna do that again. We're just gonna show you uh, how to write them for rotational coordinates and rotational motion, and you'll see that they mathematically are identical, exactly the same. So we're gonna deal, as you can imagine, with these same concepts, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So that's what we'll get to next.